Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Welcome back, Doc. Thank you, dude. That's right. Good to see you. Guy, dude, bro. Yeah. So you were in uh, Chicago? Yes. What were you doing? Uh, did a couple I got a couple talks and uh, did Man Cow Show this morning. Did a lot of radio today. Mm-hmm. How was that? Nice. Real fun. Did that for about three hours. Yeah. Yes. Oh, goddamn morning radio. Uh, you know, he runs a really good show. Yeah, but they start so early. Yeah, yeah. That's a hell. That's a <laughs> hell. And it was, you know, it add two hours behind for us. You know what I mean? I'm on Pacific time, so I'm getting there at 6.30 in the morning. It's 4.30 in my head. Yeah, I know, but... That's still not as bad as living it. You mean, oh, you mean doing it every day? When I do Stern, I got to live that time difference. You just feel the time difference. No, I'm I'm here all day. I did it all day. Flew back today. I'm I'm did, feeling it now. I'm living it now. No, but you didn't. You're not living it. You're not flying in at that time. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Okay, got it. You do it from here. You're living it. Right, right, right. It's not six in the morning. It's three in the morning. It's actually 3 in the morning. It's right, not right, just right. in your head 3 right, in the morning. Right. It is 3 in the morning. <laughs> right, got it, got it. And Drew, you make a big deal out of that in your head 3 in the morning stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm with you halfway there, but yeah. still not the same as, as, I'll, I'll as living I'll it. give you that. That's all I'm saying. I'll give you that. Hey, but good times, yeah, right? Yeah, good times. I, and I, your, your treatment of Bruce made it right on through into the Chicago streets, and people were, like, talking to me, coming up to me, saying, oh, man, Adam was brutal. Bruce last night. Well, the kid wasn't listening. Brutal. He was not listening oh, to me. Oh, my. Well. He was not obeying you, I guess, the way. Yeah, well, that's... Pay homage to your greatness. Listening is a key component yeah, yeah, to yes, obeying. Yes, bro. first must hear it. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Your Honor. No, he's, good, he's good people. <laughs> I will avoid this behavior in the future. Did you make up with him? Everything okay? Well, Bruce, like, I'll tell you, Bruce, I'll tell you, like, what got us started on our big argument last night, yeah. which was some kid called up and he said... Uh, that he'd be you. When I, when I get older, yeah. I want to be you. Yeah. And I said, well, I can't wait that long. <laughs> I need you to be me now. Be I'm now. tired. Yeah. I'm going to go now, home, beat off, and surf the net. Yeah. So I said, oh, listen, why don't we take a phone call? And uh, you, oh, Anderson, Anderson is raising his hand. Anderson must have this. Is this true, Anderson? It was me who said take the phone call. At- oh. Oh, it was Anderson. Okay. Which, An- he's making it good for me. He's, calling, he's filling it out. Do you, also, you a little have, later. Do you, later, do you Drew? have that, by the way? No, I don't. But a little no. later, Drew, I have something that Adam said about you. Also, um, I don't was a total prick to Bruce last night. All night. Yeah, I don't I'm like. Telling. I don't like when well, you. Uh, I don't like being ambushed. Is it something good about me or something bad about it's me? It's bad. Something but, bad. But well, listen, a- Anderson has a uh, bee up his bonnet too because I yelled at him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Too because he was he was screwing up as well. Was no. last night a night? So yes, you did. Of course. Oh please, I don't yell at you every night. You know, you know what happened again, Drew? Yeah. Remember a few nights ago we were doing a, you with your opera singing. Yes. And uh, you Anderson, I was talking about it, and I was trying to get him to cue it up, and he wouldn't do it. And and again last night? Again. Yes, again. And his thing again was, well, it takes 10 seconds, which is now, before he starts singing. But as I pointed out to him, we could talk over the part where the piano was playing. And we're getting all sidetracked here. Let's get on tonight. And I don't. I don't want to hear the bad thing he said about me. I don't, it's I don't, it's not bad. I just, I just, I just called you a wuss. It's, that's all. That's ambush. I, I don't believe him. No, hey, he's not, he never diagnoses okay. anything right. He's all over the map. Yeah, I don't even know if he's a real doctor. Oh, I think please. he's just a love doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go. This kid says, "I want to be. I want to be you, Adam." And I say, "All right, you you need to be me." And uh, then we decide to uh, put the kid on the air. Let him take a call. So we push the thing and do the thing. So now it's going to be Loveline with Dr. Bruce and this kid. Well, Skippy. The, the kid starts, Skippy starts talking to uh, the caller and this goes on for a couple minutes and Bruce is doing what I'm doing. Sitting back. He's sitting back. So at a certain point, I'm looking at him like I'm looking at you and I do this. I point at the mic and Bruce looks at me and he looks at the mic then he looks at me again and then I give him a you know, draw him in. Come on. You, you, you got to go. This is love line. You know, we're not, you know. Yeah. He looks at me, looks at the mic, looks at me again. There's a little pause again. I point at the, I'm pointing at the mic, you oh, know, and he's, now, now. he's just staring at me now. And uh, then I yell, would you goddamn talk? And then I got mad. It got all, it got oh. all screwed up. But what, oh, what, no. what's the part where I'm doing this with the mic, you know, like it doesn't register. Bad. The guy's a doctor. 
You know, sex is not a recreational sport. All right. All right. Now, come on. You, am I right or am I right? No, no, you're right. I, just, I can imagine that with that. I can imagine the aggression with which you started Start pointing at the mic. Well, the and third, then, the third time, it's like, it, do, don't. All right. All right. Yeah. Simple plan is our guest tonight. Uh, they got here just a little bit late because uh, some difficulty uh, with the limo and the old radio station and all that kind of stuff. But uh, we're going to work that out. So we'll take a few calls. We'll go to break. Uh, maybe a couple minutes early. Yeah, we'll bring the sure, band in here. Sure. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Jason? Hey, how you doing? You're 23. What's up? Hey, I got a question for you. I, I like to use a variety of condoms because they always come out with new ones, new ideas. The new Trojan Pleasures. I bought me a, I bought me a pack of them. Yeah. I whip, out the, I whip them out, and it's got this white goo on them. It almost looks like they've been recycled or reused. I don't know what kind of pleasures it is, but... Love Line is brought to you by Trojan. Mm-hmm. W what are you suggesting? They were... I don't know. Is this, is this, is this no, one of the jerky boys? No, I... No, yeah, yeah, they're they're repackaged. Yeah, somebody, they somebody yeah, they're used, they're covered in spunk, but they pass along. <laughs> Normally, those things would go for buck twenty nine. They're going for buck oh nine. They keep better that way. That's right. Yeah, but what's the goo? What is the goo? L Drew? Lubricant, 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 with a little no, spermicide like mixed in. Yeah, that's spermicide. That, that's fine. It's good for it's to maybe reduce your risk of STDs, maybe, and also. I'm just trying to because there's not any other condoms. I've used pretty much everyone out there except for the magnums. I ain't no elephant, but. No, no. But he's a genius. But he's got the brain away. Yeah. All right, Jason. Hey, good times. You're calling from Colorado? I, yeah. I would have pegged him Colorado immediately. Born and raised. Am I right? No, nah, I'm from Massachusetts. Holy macaroni. Uh, See, Adam, through? I, I could just blow you over with a, with a <laughs> blowjob. No. Nah. All right. Let's talk to Samantha, who's 15. Samantha? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a question. I have been going out with this guy for like, like two months now, and uh, I was giving him head the other night, mm -hmm. and uh, his roommate had asked me like two days ago what we did, and um, I told him that I gave him head. Let me stop you for a second. You're 15. Yeah. How old is the guy? He's old 19. enough to. Yeah, he has a roommate. Is he in college or something or no? Mm, no, he's just a car salesman. Car salesman. Okay. Mm. And you just, what are you hanging out with a 19-year-old for? I don't know. Just because. Uh. Car, car salesmen are, if there was a, you know, Nazi war criminal, a modern-day one, yes. I think that'd be the equivalent, the equivalent to, yeah. to car salesmen. You know. These are horrible, despicable people. I was talking to young people, some young people yesterday, and the young girls in the room were saying that the, the, I, they were, how objection, how unhappy they were with the whole oral sex thing when they decided to do it. And I said, well, why did you, why do you do it? Well, because we think it'll make the boys like us more or keep the boy. Mm. No, yeah. no, no, no. Well, well, so no. Yeah. It keep you for about five minutes and that's it. It's about it three and a half. Yeah, but right. uh, the point is you would come back, you'd have a lot of return business. You'd have some return business and that's it. But you'd have the, the purpose of the return would be going to the well for the same action. Yeah, just put your mouth by the mail slot. Yeah. I'll stop coming in. Yeah, so what did you learn about the guy? Um, well, his roommate told me that he cheated on me. Mm -hmm. Like, two days after we went, started going out. Yeah. And um, it was with this really dirty person, this really dirty chick, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, he was telling me that Mark got drunk one night. And um, That's your, uh, that's the car salesman guy? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, he t showed his roommate his penis or whatever. Mason jar. Uh, and uh, yeah. it was all crusty and red and scratchy and stuff. Yeah, no, for oh, wait, wait, you're, what? No, you're, you're, roommate is a, 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 you're building towards a, a punchline of some type. B, gonorrhea is not red and, and crusty. <laughs> C, no roommate is throwing the other roommate his penis, especially when it's infected. Ever. Ooh, Ever. Up, up. I might do that. No. What? Yeah, but no. no you the call me and ask about it. The roommate's it. not talking about it to the chick. Now, this is all bogus. This is yeah. Ridiculous. Sorry, we don't believe you. Who's putting you up to this? Oh, she's... <laughs> <laughs> women are... Uh... Transparent. No, women don't make bogus calls. I know, that's what I'm saying. Somebody put her up to it. I know. So they, they get put up to bogus calls, but they, they become like that uh, La Femme Nikita. They're, they're not natural-born killers, <laughs> but if we can plant the chip in their head and teach them Taekwondo, <laughs> then they can do our bidding for us. And that's what happens. But then when you ask a question that's off the cheat sheet, Doink. it throws their circuitry off. Yeah. Like, uh, this is a bogus call, isn't it? 
Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to say is no. Uh, yeah, really? This is uh, I'll tell you, take take some brains to to lie. I've realized. I hate to say it, and they they don't teach you this in school. But the best liars, the best cheaters, are the smartest. Yeah. You watch uh, you watch that uh, lunkhead on The Bachelor. They say like episode number two. Some chick you mean, says something like Joe Millionaire. Mean? Oh, Joe Millionaire. Yeah. yeah. They're like, what's your middle name? And he's like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking around. He's looking around. He's like, ah, uh, fire lamp. <laughs> I mean, Lance. I mean, cat. I mean, doily. Oh, Christ. No. <laughs> Runs out of the room. <laughs> really? Can't just pull the name out? Dad's name, perhaps. Uh -huh. Close friend. Maybe even your real middle name. <laughs> He's like, what's your middle name? <laughs> it's like it was a good 10 count before he came up with something. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk to uh, Jennifer's 22. Jennifer? Hello. What's up? Hi. Um, I'm 22 years old. I'm a young woman, and I'm not conceited, but I would say I'm attractive, and I'm a virgin. Mm hmm Excellent. And actually, it, it started when I was younger. It was for a purpose, like religion, or I'm waiting for love. And now I'm at a point where I'm really not waiting for anything. I need to get laid. <laughs> mm -hmm. However, um, if I share this with a guy too soon, then I don't know, he, get, he gets misconceptions, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. or, you, are you dating anybody? Actually, I just broke up with somebody and... Guys have getting... one of a series of reactions to that information. One is... Yeah, tell me. Tell all right, me. one is, oh my God, we're never going anywhere. What? what no. no yeah, oh, she, when she says share this, she means... Tell him. She, oh, not not your virginity. virginity. but the fact that she is a oh. virgin. Well, is that what you mean, Jennifer? What's that? Is what what I mean? We get in this all the time, but I took this to mean if you sleep with him too fast. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, this is going to be tough. You're you're saying when you share the information about your virginity, information. yeah, information. Okay. okay. Then they either think, yeah, they're never going to get lucky, and then they're gone, or it's like their number one goal they want to. Take. Right. And there there is an intermediate zone, but it's e it's either us uh, never going to go down, or this is a this is a, a, a plum I've got to pick immediately, and that's my, that's my uh -huh. life's quest now. It has nothing to do with you. Right. Um, well, why do you have to share anything with it? You're done with your religious stuff. There is another thing guys will react to, which is, oh, oh my God, what a responsibility. If I'm her first, oh, no, my God. Nobody does that. Exactly. Oh, you, who does oh, that? Do. No, you, hi. Drew does that, not me. <laughs> no way. Well, no, I'm not high, but that's not the you. I've gotten. Yeah, no, a, a, a decent guy would go. I, I, well, I mean, a, de a, dec a decent guy, well, first off, this... this this works its way out mathematically because a decent guy wouldn't just do a uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of thing. That's right, but he'd also think to himself, oh, my God, she's going to be so attached to me after this her first no. time. I'm not sure I want to be in yeah. that far in this no. relationship. Yeah, he would just, I'm not he, like that would either. Would you shut up? Jesus Christ. All right, well, tell him you're not like that, and they'll, no, they'll, no, they'll no. get over it quick. If a guy was interested in her... And his feelings were true, and mm -hmm. he was sincere. He would not be worried about the responsibility. He would, but he get he over it. He might be worried about the responsibility if he was a decent guy, but he knew he had to move back to Chicago yeah, to yeah, finish yeah, yeah, school, yeah, yeah. Then, or he had a relationship somewhere but else. What twenty-two-year-old guy is already thinking about moving on? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the start of a relationship, he's thinking about. Uh, there, oh there, my God! There's um, there's guys who who uh, plus a guy could be twenty-six, twenty-seven. Right, you know, right. she's twenty-two. Jennifer, yeah. maybe, she, maybe well, she should go for older guys. Hmm. What do you do? I, I'm actually going for an older guy right now. Right. So, which is why I'm wondering. See, but here's the thing. I have a big mouth, and I'm honest, and I'll share it. Like, everybody I know knows. Jennifer, you know what? Right. Don't, right, don't worry about when you Hold tell on. a guy. Don't she worry about it. sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> What's the matter what with you? Do, what do you do for a living? What's the matter with What me? do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? I have a professional job at a desk and a computer. And Oh, well, that... <laughs> I see. Uh, so yeah. you're, hold on a second. You're saying this computer's on a desk? You called it, and, and it's a professional occupation. One where yeah, you get paid. I, I mean, I don't work in retail like I used to. I used to, and then I moved out and got a grown-up job, and I don't really feel like a grown-up. But all right, all right. Well, you're definitely attractive. 
A little bit of a pain in the ass. It's going to be no. Yes, yes. Where do you live? What city? Los Angeles. Where? In L.A., L.A. No, does anybody live in Los Angeles? In Los Angeles? What do, mean, what do you mean where in Los Angeles? Baldwin Park? What do you mean where in Los Angeles? Like Hollywood. All right. It's a big city. Come on. I know it's a big city. That's why I said where in Los Angeles, Captain Coos. <laughs> All right. I was going to invite you down here in the studio, but you've angered Drew. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Drew. All right. All right, baby. Then take care. You'll find the right man. He'll be, be happy. Be oh, she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> a minty fresh cooch. Oh. <laughs> Where do you live in Los Angeles? Los Angeles, Los Angeles. It's a big city like Hollywood. It's, I didn't get her point with yeah, the big city I know. part. I know. Okay. Everyone lives in Los Angeles. I know. Okay. All right. All right. I was going to tell her to come on down, but I could tell she was. You know what this was? I'm good looking. I'm good looking. I don't have to be that smart. I don't have to be that nice, and no one ever really says anything about it. Katie. Katie, you're 32. Yes. What's up? Okay. Uh, my, fans, my fiance and I are getting back together, and um, I wanted to learn how to entice him how to go down on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, entice him. To go down there? Have you ever asked? How about you, uh, how about you fill yourself up with beer nuts? Well, Guys can't stay away from uh, like an ashtray full of beer nuts? Huh? No, we don't drink. We're alcoholics. We're alcoholics. I, I, I know. that. I, their beer nuts aren't, 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 aren't full of beer. It's just, but you got to have one with the other. It might trigger them, see? Oh, okay. I see. I see you could get them off the wagon. Have you, have you asked him to go down there? Yes. And what does he say? Well, one time we had had barbecue, and then we got into messing around, and all of a sudden he just started going down on me. And I, I stayed there like a deer in the headlights, didn't move. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting into it, and I told him, wait, let's do this. And by the time we had changed positions, he totally lost interest. He didn't want to go down on you anymore? Right. Uh, Hold on curiosity. a second. got to put something together. <laughs> what does the barbecue have to do with this? <laughs> I don't know, but... Oh, my God. Eats a lot of barbecue, doesn't like to go down on the ladies. I got ethnicity picked out, Drew. I'm going with black guy. Red thought Chinese. No. <laughs> I don't know, wait, where is she in one? Uh, four. Oh, four. Katie? Yes. Is the guy black? No, he's definitely wood. Mm. Yes. He's definitely and wood? This is what I tell him. You're the oh. only wood in the hood that doesn't go down. And he's like, I can't. Hold on, what's a wood? A white boy. Oh, that's wood? Yeah. Oh, I've learned something. I didn't know that one either. Yeah. Okay. So like he's, uh, he, is he hanging around with a lot of brothers? No, no, no. It could be no. a bad influence. He's from Jamaica or anything? Um, okay. He's been um, in and out of the prison system. And well, that's hanging around with brothers. Uh, no. He's been in and out of prison. Yeah. It's good that you two have gotten it back together. Uh, Where? Uh, what was he in prison for? Like meth? Um, exactly, yeah. yeah. They've yeah. always been drug-related. But, but he's in recovery okay. now. Right. Yeah. All right, it's good. All right. good. And so I understand what the disaster was and, and why the barbecue is important in the story. I don't know, but it was a good trigger for him, and then all of a sudden he just stopped. So if you feed him barbecue, maybe it'll... I, I asked him afterwards. Hold on. Afterward. This, is like, this is like retarded <laughs> native superstition. Do you know what I mean? The volcano stopped erupting when when you fell down so yeah. if you fall down again it's going to stop the volcano and these things that aren't attached to each other and so we, we make reproductions of the events we'd like to see so that's right. a remind right yeah. Katie yes okay well I don't think the barbecue got him going down there but maybe just put him in a good mood yeah you know we have tried this before and we have talked about it and he's told me uh, why he doesn't like why me. what why? is that um when he was younger, he was molested, ah, okay. and this woman used to do that to him. Mm. And so him. He, I got to try that. So he doesn't. He used to make him do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Well, listen. That's, that's gonna, gonna be, be that's gonna be tough for him to overcome. Yeah. So I mean, should I treat it like um, I go through it sometimes when I go down on him, and I have to stop because it triggers. That happened to you too. Yeah. Okay. Oh. We but we both. You guys should never sixty nine. <laughs> you would just explain. Yeah, It'd just be like a couple of Vietnam vets. 
All right. All right, listen. Uh, you, uh, so you have an understanding of how difficult it is, how, how traumatic that is, and how painful it can be, and how right. impossible it is to overcome. You, you have to look at it as something that it just needs to be managed in the relationship. It may not be something that he can do. You've got to find something else. Do you guys, uh, you don't have any kids, do you? Not together. Oh, okay. But we have there are kids, kids from other relationships. You both do. However, I'm, a, I'm only a second relationship. All right, so he's got a couple kids? Yeah. Oh. You got a couple kids? Yeah. Oh. Where are those kids? Um, a minor with me. All right. His, he doesn't know. He's locked yeah. up right now. All right. The CPS took him away. Well, okay. Why? Oh, the kids. The good thing is they're not with their mom. Good thing. Right, that's a good news. She's the one who won't stop using. Right, uh. all right. All right, so there is a happy ending to all this. Oh, kids right. uh, aren't with their parents. Are, yeah. Right. All right, and hey, no more kids, though, right? No, no, definitely not. All right, does anybody, by the way, from the state talk to you about this? Because uh, this would be part of my overall plan, to talk to gents like this and ladies like yourself and ask you to please not have any kids. No conversations this way? Katie? Um, uh -oh. on the air. TV came on and she got distracted. Something, something else is on the air? Something, the TV came on. Katie? Katie? Here I am. She's uh, ordering the Wonder Mop right now. <laughs> no, I definitely agree. If you're not clean, you have no business. To That's, there, right. Girl. That's right. That's right. Katie, the Katie's and, listen. Katie's, you guys are clean. Yeah. You're taking care of your kids. Uh, you, neither one of you can tolerate oral sex. This is a, a match, match made in yes, heaven. Yes, absolutely. It, it is. Yeah. It yeah. Is. All right. You guys love each other. He's out of clink. Keep working with your sponsor, right? Yeah. That's, that's the key here. And then let's not focus on what he can't do. Let's focus on what he can do, like not do drugs. Yeah. Yeah. He could probably use his penis okay, too, right? Sure, he yeah. could. Yeah. All right. We've never had that where they both had trouble. With the exact same kind of abuse. Yeah. Interesting. And it's rare to have the male having been sexually abused by a female. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tag my kids like uh, caribou, so in case the uh, city takes them away, yeah. I can find them. Yeah. That's going to be my plan. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Slide in at night, little little raid on Antebi type uh, hostage situation, little extraction situation. Pull them out of that foster care and make a run for the Canadian border. Speaking of Canada, simple plan is going to be in here. We'll be right back. Next. <laughs> Love line, love line. We'll be right back. This is <laughs> every hour, two Americans under the age of twenty-five are infected with HIV. Protect yourself. Call toll-free one eight six six three four four K N O W. Love line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla on ninety four seven N R K. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Kurtwood Sm Smith will be in here tomorrow night from uh, that 70s show. He's the dad. And then uh, Queens and Stone Age will be in here on Thursday. Simple Plan is in here tonight. They're going to be on my beloved Jimmy Kimmel show tomorrow night, which is a, uh, a good time. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, enjoy yourselves. We have uh, Pierre Bouvier. That's right. You got it right. Chuck... Chuck Camus? That's Como. Yeah, Como. Like, like, like Perry Como. Yeah. And this is going to be a good time. I can't wait to hear from... David Desrosiers. <laughs> Rosiers. Yeah, it's uh, Desrosiers, but don't Des worry. Desrosiers. <laughs> Sounds like a hockey player name. David Desrosiers. All right. That's good. Uh, Drew, you could do these because uh, these guys are French-Canadian and... Uh, Drew's uh, French fag. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's French fagadian. And... Uh, Great. <laughs> French for Gadian. Write that down, would you, buddy? That's good. Got it. Got it. So uh, he can uh, speak a little Spanish, but uh, as we're talking uh, during the break, the French-Canadian uh, accent is much different than the proper French. And they can understand the proper French, but uh, Drew is going to have a little difficulty understanding the uh, Canadian. But you guys don't have any accents in your English, do you? Uh, you'll hear it come out. Yeah, very, a little bit. Very little. But will it will it sound like a sort of Canadian it accent? It won't sound fag. No, it sounds. It, it sounds like an e, like the Canadian A, like along the border of like yeah, Minnesota yeah, 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 kind yeah, of yeah, accent, yeah. not a French accent. But we don't really have like the, the Canadian A and the yeah, a we boot, don't say a boot, a boot yeah, and all boot. that. That's more like the like Central west, Canada yeah. or like out west, some north, like in the boonies. But we're not. We don't really say that. 
Just a little bit, eh? Yeah, nice yeah a little. <laughs> Big you, coffee. Are you guys crazy for hockey? No. Not really. I don't even watch hockey. What's yeah. that? Yeah, it's not rock and roll. <laughs> nah. The uh, CD, uh, No Pads, No Helmets, Just Balls, is uh, out and uh, came out in March, and it's doing quite well, and we're going to uh, hear something off of it. Uh, well, I guess we should hear something off of it this break, but sure. uh, talk a little more, maybe take a call. These guys are going to go out with uh, Avril Levine, and uh, she seems kind of snotty to me. She, you know what? Is she a little snotty? <laughs> she's not. She, she's nice. She seems that way, but she's not. I think she's just a little bit shy. Ow! You know? You know? Yeah. She's she's, a, she's got a lot going for her. She's quite young, and I don't know. She's cool. We have, she, fun, we have fun with her. She's a Canuck, too, right? She is. That's right. It's a big Canadian tour. It's going to be Avril Lavigne, us, and another band called Gob. It's going to be a great Canadian time. And a little band called BTO. They're the oh. Canadian, you know? Uh, got it. <laughs> you guys didn't know Boss Walkman Turner Overdrive? Right, yes. right, right. Yeah. I didn't realize they were Canadian. Oh, yeah. They're Canadian. Hell, yeah. Tragically hip. They know how to rock those Canadians. And is is Avril uh, is she French Canadian? No, no. So you guys. So we can talk about her. Do you know what her name is though? Yeah, it's true. Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. It's a French Canadian. Yeah. yeah, April wine. But she doesn't speak April French. April wine. It's true. Kind of sounds like <laughs> April the wine. Avril. Um, Not really. Devine, Yeah. So when are you guys yeah, going yeah. out with her? Uh, I we've been going out for Next like two Friday. years now. We've been going out for two years, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I we're mean out on tour. <laughs> oh, on yeah. tour. All oh, right, we we're going out. Um, what is it? April, actually? Yeah, April and May. Avril. <laughs> I predict one of you gets her. You think so? At some point. We're putting some money on it. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm not let's putting see. money on it. I gotta <laughs> I say Pierre, because he's vocals. You know, he's lead. A. That's, sorry, but that's the uh, way it goes, you know. It's, it's singers right. and drummers, usually. Singers and drummers. He'll get hooked up with her early, you guys. We'll tag team. You guys will bang your way through, <laughs> through uh, Canada and the United States with all the groupies and underage chicks, and then they'll break up at the end of the tour, and he'll, he'll cry his way back home to uh, French Canada. And then Canadia. he's going to call Love French Line. Canadian. That's right. We'll call in with our problems. With the herpes and everything. The band That's broke right. up. We can't get late anymore. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's take one call and then we'll uh, hear a song. All right, <clears throat> Gina. Hi. You're 16. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I just want to tell Soul Plan that they're the best band in the world. Oh, thank wow. you so much. You guys inspire me so much. Cool. I went to Kiss the Stash and I went to see you guys in London, Ontario. We, me and my friend, drove all the way out there. I don't know if you guys remember me. You crossed the border. Yes, we did. Wow, was that That's the show? Nice. What show I was, was that? Strip Church. Huh? <laughs> was it the was it the Phoenix in London? Yeah, I was. That was a crazy show. Yeah, that was, was a lot so, of fun. I was right up front, and I was the smallest. And Did I you get your knees so crushed? Good. Yeah. Sorry nice. about that. Do you have a sex oh problem? God, the best. <laughs> and American Jesus was good too. Sweet. And I just um, I liked you guys for the longest time, and I didn't know you guys were reset. Uh huh. And when I found out, I was like flipping out. But I was just I like have an opinion. You guys should do a reset tour. No, we can't. It's over. You really can't. No, can't. it's it's like a it's like a, a an inside issue. We can't do it. It's it's like a it's just a, you know we're moving on to better things. It's like breaking up with a girlfriend. You can't go back. That's right. Oh, yes, you unless know, you get I drunk. Was, I was so young and I didn't get. All right, would you shut up? <laughs> what was her question? Her question. Just want to talk to the band. There was no. I know, question. but her question was tell her boyfriend she's. No, no. I, what, what, oh, was, am I looking at the wrong, wrong one? one? What was your oh, biggest accomplishment? All right, wait a minute. Then let me let me apologize, Gina. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now hurry up. It's okay. Well, uh, I just want to tell Civil Plan that they're cool. And me and my friend made a, a video for you guys. We're going to send it to you guys. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. We can't wait to see it. It's like four hours long. Oh, my really God. Long. Oh, boy. Maybe I, can't, maybe I can't wait to see it. What are you guys doing in it? Oh, uh, we're basically, <laughs> like, hanging out, doing stupid stuff. Uh, I, wanted a, I made a concert, <laughs> but my friend, like, didn't tape it. So I don't think it's on there. <laughs> yeah. You're a lesbian. Are, are you guys kissing in it? There's a good there's a good chance if she didn't tape it, it might not be on there, right? <laughs> reasonable, reasonable. Fifty fifty, would you say, Drew, as yeah, a doctor? Uh, making serious significant assumptions. Yeah, fifty fifty. <laughs> Uh, Gina? Yeah. Did you guys make out in the video? No, actually, me and her, um, I wouldn't do that with her because she w she's done a friend since my parents. All right, you're bringing us down, baby. <laughs> this is rock and roll. We don't want to get all said yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's You're hear a being. song. Let's hear a song. You queued up there, uh, Anderson? Mm-hmm. This is uh, from uh, Simple Plan. This is called Addicted. <laughs> Okay, but 
I want you to know I'm a dick, I'm addicted to you I can't pretend I don't care When you don't think about me Do you think I deserve this? I try to make you happy But you left anyway I'm trying to forget that I'm addicted to you But I want it and I need it I'm addicted to you Now it's over Can't forget what you said And I never Wanna do this again Heartbreaker 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 I think you know that it's true I'd run a thousand miles to get you Do you think I deserve this? I tried to make you happy I did all that I could Just to keep you But you left anyway Simple plan is uh, in studio tonight. No pads, no helmet, just balls. Pierre, Dave, and Chuck all here <clears throat> from the band. Going to be on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live tomorrow night. That's right. Pierre was asking me during the song whether I still keep in touch with that dude. <laughs> We're still lovers. Yes, all right. We are. A, a partner de vie. Still life partners, that's right. <laughs> that's right. All right, let's... Uh, eh, maybe we should tease this call and take a break. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's getting about be about this, that time. Just take this one; it's easy, and then we'll tease one. All right, Kevin. Yeah, hey Adam. You're 14. Yep. What's up? Uh, well, I was just wondering if it's normal for my penis to glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I think I think you went to a rave, and then the girl no. went down on you, and she had something on her lips and stuff. That's yeah, right. That's right. That's what I thought. But yeah. all right, there, Kevin. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. Good times. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> good instincts, Drew. Yeah. Well, well it's right. to get rid of it. Well, that's true. All right. Now, we got uh, Joe, who had an orgy with Pal's fiance, having sex with her ever since. Wants to know whether to tell the guy or not. Seems like a good enough place to leave off, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. We'll take a quick break. Simple plan is here, and we'll be right back. Back in a minute. Loveline on 93.3. 
94.7 NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Welcome. Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Corolla on 94.7 NRK. Hey, it's Love Line, everybody. Pierre, Chuck, and Dave are all in here from Simple Plan. What up? They're uh, going to be on the Kimmel Show tomorrow night and uh, on tour with uh, Avril uh, Levine, which is not the uh, Jewish Levine. That's probably the French Levine, right? Yes, it's April the Wine. Is that what it means? No, Almost. it means it means April the the Vine. Oh, the Vine? Yeah, that's a little crazy, I know. but it works. It does work. on her. All right, let's uh, get to the phones. And, uh, Vine Vivigne? V-I-G-N-E? That's what it is. Oh, that's how she spells it? Yeah, it's oh. L-A-V-I-G-N-E. Wow. Yeah, yeah see, Drew knows. Joe? Hey, how's it going? What's hey, up, man? good. You're 20? Yeah. You had an orgy? Yeah. Sweet. Well, now, orgy to me means more than three. Well, see, it started off as the four of us, my friend, his fiance, and her friends, and... Somehow or another, I ended up with both of them. Both the girls? Yes. No, not, not him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, you said her friends. Uh, you mean just friend. Friend. Uh, yeah. What happened to your buddy? Uh, Pulled a groin, had to, had to tap out. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's yeah, devastating. But, that would happen to me once. In the clutch like that? <laughs> Tapped out early. Yeah. I was yeah. watching Sports Center and Ice Pack on my nuts. Well, you know, he just couldn't hang, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he just let her, <laughs> Maybe he let was him. hanging. Yeah, we, we're having trouble believing this. Where was he while you were polishing off uh, the two ladies? Uh, he was in the other room. No. No. No way. Uh, Joe, we're calling you a liar, buddy. No, hey, seriously. I'm while his liar. fiance was getting mad nah. okay, you. Okay, this is what happened. I think he was scared on how big you were. Is he loaded? What's that? What was that, what Anderson? Was that? All right, what, whatever. Was Let's he, is he, was he intoxicated? Excuse me? Was he intoxicated? Uh, yes, we all were. It was on New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. and uh, we started, uh, we got them in the shower, we were pouring champagne all over the girls, and then it just progressed to the bedroom. Oh. We were, it was started out as all oral at first, and then... With the four of you? The four of us, yeah. We yeah. were switching off with the girls, and then uh, I, I had both of them, and we, we actually, actually hadn't even had sex yet, but we were just all kind of like, you know, orally... You know, going yeah. at it, and uh, and then she just said, you know, I don't mind if uh, you know you give it to me, <laughs> and I thought I thought he gave the okay on it, and <laughs> come to find out uh, about a week ago, she oh. told me that he didn't. Yeah. And uh, well, didn't he uh, want to know that night what went on in there? No, he didn't say anything. It was actually kind of weird. Like he didn't, you know, like. Maybe it was just like all in good fun, I guess, that night. And so we then, just left the room. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so you had sex with both of them. Right. And then like a week later, she calls me, want me to come over. Oop. Yeah. Was he not? Yeah. Was he not home? No. Uh, they they don't actually live together yet. They're they're engaged, but uh. How old is How together. old is she? She's eighteen. Uh, right. Ooh. Um, Can they not get married, please? Please. Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, I've pretty much been wrecking it ever since. Uh huh. You've been having sex with her? Yeah. All right. What I, about uh, 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 with this guy? Is he a good friend of yours? Uh, well, I'm supposed to be the best man in the wedding. <laughs> that's oh, nice. boy. Well, no, wait a minute. This is part of the duty. So you hold, you gotta hold, <laughs> I think you gotta hold the ring and bang the bejesus. Uh, I'm there the, for you. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I'll I mean, hold your hand. Hold Adam. the ring and hold what, the what would Adam do? Well, oh, Ad, Adam, Adam wouldn't call the radio station and lie. Yeah. That's, that's the first thing Adam wouldn't do. Come on, uh, come on Adam. I'm not lying. This is 100% truth. All right. Liar, liar, whore, liar, oh. whore. You know it. All right. <laughs> well, look, when are they planning on getting married? July. Okay. And uh, you're the best man. Yes. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're going to have to have a talk with this yes, guy. Yes, you're going to have to come clean. You're going to have to explain that, uh, A, he can't get her pregnant, and, B, they got to take a little time off, put this thing, put this... 
thing back. You, you don't even have to be specific about who she's with, but you have to tell him that for sure you know that she's with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can't tell you for a fact. She's been cheating on you constantly. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah and this marriage cannot happen. He's the best man, but he's definitely not the best friend. <laughs> oh, where's the wisdom? Yeah. What a what a delightful chant, Phil. Yeah, what's up? You're 23. I sure am. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Long time listener, first time caller. I've been listening since oh, since uh. You're right, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> Are you uh, like playing with yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Listening since. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've been listening to you guys since uh, Ricky Rackman way back in the day, and uh, okay, well here's my problem. Uh -huh. uh, my girlfriend, even though we're kind of like fighting right now, she's she's telling like she wants to get her nipples pierced. Why? Right. What is that? That's the same thing that dropped in. No, it wasn't. Phil. Yeah. yeah. You there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I don't think it's a good idea because, uh, uh, well, if you want to take them out, if you want to get pregnant and have a kid, you can't really breastfeed because of all the scar tissue, right? No, really? No, you can't. You, you can. You can. Yeah, yeah, you they, still can. Supposedly, the people that we've talked to people at, a, at piercing institutions, they claim that you can. Breastfeeding is already a difficult procedure. Women don't appreciate the fact that it's not well, something that babies take too naturally. You have to learn how to do it. And adding piercings makes it even more difficult, but it doesn't prevent it. It doesn't prevent it, but, no. but do you think it could? No. Well, it, it might make something that's difficult already slightly more difficult. Or, or something that's on the border of being impossible, impossible. Uh -huh. well, in, in other words, what if, what about right, Drew, I don't I think that's... I don't, a lot of babies do not take to the breast. I know, but you say something that's on the border Borderline of being impossible. impossible. In other words, if Even the band knows that you're an idiot over here. <laughs> in, in other words, if someone is just would, would have just been able to get the baby to take, right. this might be enough to push it over into not taking. Okay. See what I'm if saying? the piercing is still it there, you're on saying? the piercing as well. Are you saying is the, if the piercing is still there? No, I'm just saying that it may make it more difficult and breastfeeding is a difficult procedure that hmm. doesn't always work. That's so what I just said. So it's, it's probably not even worth the, wor like, worth the risk. Well, like, well here's, here's the deal, Phil. Uh, yes, this is a, an issue, but it's not a not paramount a issue. Deal, the, no. the paramount issue is that you don't like it. Yeah. You don't want her to do it. It that, looks that, great, well, isn't dude. Isn't that attractive, though? Do you got the guys really find it that much? I think it's great. Dude, it's awesome. I've, I've been with girls with nipple rings, and it's fun. <laughs> I hate it, personally. Uh, yeah, yeah, here, here. Yeah, but no, that, that's I'm, just, you, I'm Squaresville. You know uh, what I'm saying? I'm not a band. <laughs> but here, here's the point. You're her man. She, If she's doing this, she should be doing it theoretically for you, since other guys don't oh, see her nipples. Well, but, but it's for her, Adam. Uh, well, we're her pleasure. It's like wearing uh, the lacy underwear. Yeah. I think she might be doing it because we're fighting around now. She knows I don't want her to do it. Ah, uh, uh, threatening. That's good. Well, why don't you why don't you tell her? Why don't you insist that she does it in a very angry way? <laughs> Say you're my bitch, and I command you to get pierced. <laughs> and any woman, wom women respond very well to reverse psychology. Reverse psychology. I found. <laughs> yeah, women, women, kids, and pets usually <laughs> the ones that work the best. Yes, where you, you know, yell at the cat, get back on the sofa, get back on the sofa. They, they don't. Then then they go into the crate. You see what I'm saying? Especially cats. Especially cats. Okay, so. Uh, work it out with her, but she really shouldn't be doing this just to spite you. And it, if that's the truth, then I don't know. Maybe you guys don't have the greatest foundation for a relationship. Right. Okay. There Let's uh, talk to uh, Tashia. 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 Oh, this is Tasia. Tasia. Yes. Oh, Adam, I love your show so, so much. Which show? <laughs> Both of them, of the, course. This show? And the man show. Yeah. They're great. Cranky Anchors? <laughs> Not a fan of the Crank Yankers? I've never seen that. Oh, all right. Well, don't worry. New season starting uh, <laughs> beginning of March. You're going to see it, baby. Um, I called to ask Simple Plan a question. Here hey, they up? are. Shoot. Well, you guys are amazing, first of all. Thank I, you. Your CD is great. Thank you. And I was wondering that I heard um, things about you, go, you guys going to Warp Tour. We are. That's right. We're doing the whole doing thing. Doing the whole thing. We'll be there. Good. Oh, I have another question, and um, I heard that you guys are, like, really Oh, close. wait a minute. See, you know what's funny about this? Yeah. Uh... Sorry for cutting her off. But That's all right. See, her question says, uh, tell boyfriend she was diagnosed with warts after <laughs> sleeping with him, okay? Now, about, about 20 minutes ago, I mistakenly said she had the wrong question. I was pointing to her, and then I apologized to the other caller because it was a call above hers. Yeah. But somehow, in a, in a weird fit of uh, clairvoyancy, 
I knew she was going to have a bogus one too. Right. We never do that, no, Drew. No, it's good. What, what happened there? What is that? You, somehow you knew that she was going to be a question for the band, <laughs> even though it says it's a question about warts. Yes, and even though I falsely accused her, thinking it was the other person. Yep. See, what's more interesting, simple plan or genital warts? Warts. Genital warts. pretty much the same. Sure. The band, it's just, <laughs> we, we, have to, we, we have to squelch people calling, making up calls, and then doing it. If you want to talk to the band, by the way, that's no problem. You just, just call say so. and say you want to talk to the band, we'll hang up on you. <laughs> no, no, we'll put you through. We have a call. We have Mike up here who uh, wants to talk to the band, for instance, and we'll talk to him, and he can talk to the band. Uh, first, we've got to take a break. Should yeah. we sell Jason over no, here? No, let's just take the break. You know, we got, we're getting a lot of uh, screwballs and jack-offs and jackettes calling tonight. Yes, young, yes, young girls who are That's our crowd. <laughs> which we don't normally get. Yes, I blame you guys. <laughs> we, need some, uh, we need some chicks calling this show. That's what we need. Not goofball guys who may be bogus. Right? Old, older ones. Yeah. We'll take a little break. Simple Plan is uh, with us tonight. We'll be right back. All right, guys, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. 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 On 94.7 at RK. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. Pierre, Chuck, and David are both all here from uh, Simple Plan. CD, no pads, no helmets, just balls is uh, out as we speak. And again, uh, going to be on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live tomorrow night playing the uh, outdoor arena over there, which uh, if you <laughs> haven't seen arena. it, yeah, it's, I don't I like really that. call it's it arena, cool. but might as well err on the side of grandiose sure. and big, you know. Yeah. But it really does look amazing on. Yeah. Uh, on television with the lights and the fog and the stage and all that stuff. And they bring in a ton of people to... Uh, oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. They have to pay the people for our show. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any fans, so yeah, it might be an pay issue. Pay a lot, lot of money. Well, we're using a lot of uh, hobo street people, <laughs> stuff Cheap. like that. We're rounding them up. Just, just we're used whatever's to on Hollywood Boulevard, just We round, them, round them up. You have a truck yeah. and you put them on. Runaway prostitutes, <laughs> folks like that. A lot of illegals, a lot of day laborers from the Home Depot, too. Mm -hmm. We rounded those people. So it'll be an eclectic crowd. Watching Simple Plan tomorrow night. Jason? My favorite. Yeah, how's it going? You're 25? Right. What's up? I got a vasectomy about uh, November. <sighs> I want to hear about this guy. Mm-hmm. At 25. Yeah. Well, yeah, why have a vasectomy at 25? Do you have kids? Yeah, I got two kids. I'm married, and we're, we're done. I don't know. All right. Wow. Huh. Um, so a couple months later, I go back to get my sample, and I, I mentioned to the doctor that I've noticed an increase in my production of sperm. And well, not not of sperm, but semen. Correct. Right. Um, I've noticed it. My wife has mentioned it and without me even telling her. <laughs> I mentioned the doctor, and he, he's telling me that there's, there's no way it could happen from the vasectomy. But before then, I mean, I'm talking <laughs> double You're, amount of production. You change your diet? <laughs> not at all. I like the part where his wife mentioned it without him even telling her. His wife was like... <laughs> 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 You're making a ton of jizz, buddy. You didn't prompt there at all, huh? How long ago was the vasectomy? It was in November. November, and you're still doing this? Yes. Well, maybe it has something to do with it, but it's not sperm. It's just semen, which is different. But why, right? Drew? I don't know of any reason why it would be. I but think maybe it's pretty it's, cool. You'll yeah, have to get a sponsorship from Kleenex. Are you having it will cost are you, you a lot more money. sex less frequently? Um, no, it's... Same. Same. Three, four times a week. All right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. I have a question for you. Yeah. If you have sex, I mean, you have no more sperm in your semen? Correct. Huh, so that's weird. It's nice, Interesting. Though. And does that change it? Is it easier to nope. mop up or anything? No, same. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is, it less, is, it, is it less sticky with the texture different? Contact? But I, 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 could, I could see you before me a whole new field of research. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How about the color? Yes. Yeah. Same. Uh, hey, Jason, you should join the uh, porn industry. Yeah, like Peter North. There you go. More semen. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking about that. Yeah, you should do that, dude. 
I imagine the Canadians uh, like Peter North because the word North <laughs> yes. in his name. We feel, we, we feel called North it, Pole. You know? <laughs> he has this a whole, connection. Yeah, he has this film series called North Pole, so we can relate. <laughs> Katie? Yeah. You're 21? I am. What's up? Well, so I just wanted to say I've listened to the show for uh, like 11 years now. Oh, my so God. I'm so glad I finally got to call. Wow. 11 years. Congratulations. You're, it's not yeah, you just got to know how to use a phone? <laughs> you went what, Katie? I was in elementary school, and I started listening. Where? Where wow. were you living? Where was I living? In Seattle. Okay. Because you're in Boise now, right? Yeah. Okay. Going to school. I don't ah. think the show was on in Seattle. Eight years ago. Eight. 11 yeah, years ago. Yeah, it was. Eight, not, I was, I was a, in like sixth grade. Not <laughs> Whatever. No, you're 12, nine years ago. You're get eight, well, eight years okay, ago. Okay, close enough. But Somewhere around 10. <laughs> all right. Well, it went from 11 to eight. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> there we go. Anyways, um... It's like I penis size. Like, when you start to ask questions, it shrinks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, when I, I've been dating a guy for a year now, and um, he, I know he wants me to give him a blowjob, but I haven't, I'm afraid, basically. I'm afraid of the whole thing. I don't know if it's just the penis itself or the taste or I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll tell you something. I'm 100% sure he wants it. Oh, I know he does. But have you, you've never. Like, no, you've, I'm not pressuring you. This is something you've never done before. No, I've never done okay. it. It's, it's really easy, baby. I know. At 21, huh? Yeah. I, wow. I, what if you put a condom on? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's because I'm afraid of performance anxiety or what, but. Mm, I doubt it's that. There's no bad blowjobs. <laughs> Yeah. Like, no, the only misunderstood <laughs> blowjobs. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Especially if you're 21. You're, uh, is, is your boyfriend the same age as you? No, he's older. Ooh. Uh, oh. how old? How so there's no he? bad blowjob. How old is he? Um, almost 27. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. You, I, 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 would, I would say you you, you got to try. I mean, if you've never tried it, it uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. It doesn't taste like anything unless I'm I'm wrong. How, how do you long know? have you been how do you know? I don't know. How long have you been with the boyfriend? For a year. A year, so I mean, you know, you should have some kind of trust going. Hold on, is he is he a clean guy? What's that? Is he clean? Oh yes, very. There you All go. Right. There's no taste. Okay, but let me ask you this: Is he Katie. trim? Is is there any <laughs> any uh, <laughs> any question? Anything happened to you in the past that would freak you out about this? No, I don't think so. I mean, nothing, nothing comes Just... to my mind. All right. Well, speaking of coming to your mind, <laughs> you need to get down there. <laughs> you understand? I'll try. You know, just do it. Well, he's out of the country right now. But... I don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. When's he coming back? Like six months. All right. You... That's it. I'm flying six to Boise. Six months? I'm flying to Boise. Is he in the military? <laughs> What's that? Is he in the military? Yes. All right. So... Oh, my God. He deserves it. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Where is he? He's probably banging his way through every brothel <laughs> no, in the he's, Middle he's East. like over in the desert, so there's not much going on over there. Mm. Yeah, it's probably a humping a uh, <laughs> viper <laughs> camel or something. A camel, yeah. Viper hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did when I'll I was out in the desert. i you said that. <laughs> All right, Katie, get going, would you? Yeah, you know what? If he loves you, just tell him that you you want to try and... Uh, or maybe practice baby. with some of your friends yeah. at home, and when he gets yeah. back, you can try <laughs> with him. Get some bananas or something. Well, well here's, here's the thing. If, if somebody was, you know, sexually abused and her dad yeah. forced her to do this or something, it's then different. you have an excuse. That's a different situation. But if you're 21 and you just think it's a little I icky or you don't think you do that great or you just don't feel like it, just tough go. ass. Yeah, come on. It's your job. Get down there. Exactly. That's what and, I think. And I don't mean to be real chauvinistic about this, and it's his job to do stuff to you, too. You yeah. guys exactly. are partners. Does he go down on you? Oh, no, wait no, no. She's gone. Let me oh, sorry. Her. Wait, she might be there. Does he go down on you? He has before. But there you go. Well, you gotta really come on. With it. You're uncomfortable with it. Yeah. What's I, up with you? I don't know. It's just sex. Come on. I know. I'm a little uptight, apparently. All right, loosen up, loosen baby. up. Yeah. You got to start drinking. <laughs> oh, I do enough of that. All right. No, drinking semen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this band is all class, Adam. All class. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> this David kid's a genius, man. <laughs> a genius. Drink and semen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink to that. I know what the ladies like. They like giving me oral. That's right. <laughs> All right. We got to... Uh, well, you want to hear a song? You want to take another call? Another call. Another call. No songs. Calls. All right. We'll More take fun. One, we'll take one call, and then we'll hear a song. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse, 17. Yes. Hi. Um, I actually was just... In my car, I was to you guys on the line, and I heard a guy named Joe that just called in. 
And did you did you hear Joe's story? Yes, we did because we spoke to him. Yes, you did. And he was actually the guy. I was one of the girls that he hooked up with on New Year's Eve. Oh, uh-huh. and how was it? I don't you, believe Were that. you the Come engaged on. one? I am the engaged one. Yes. Ooh, are you serious? Uh. I'm totally serious. And the thing that I don't understand is I don't know what to do because yes, I am engaged to this guy. Well, don't get married. That's what you do. That's the only important thing. Yeah, but I, I mean, we're engaged. And we've been going yeah. out. Liar, liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. <laughs> let me let me ask you a couple of questions because Joe talked to us off the air and gave us a couple of uh, details, details okay. that uh, you would never know. How did things get started? Well, we were all just partying on the ears, and we were drunk, and, you know, one thing led to another, and we were all hooking up, and my fiancé at the time, I mean, that night, didn't really care, so he didn't really say anything, and so since he wasn't really getting upset about it, then we just kind of went with what was going on. And where, where did this get going? Um, we were at somebody's house just partying. No. That's yeah. a damn lie, and you know it! No, I know. When did the first acts happen? When did the first what? Where? first act happen. Where? It happened at, at a friend's house. What room? Uh, well, it started in the shower and ended up in the bedroom. Oh, 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 oh. Champagne in the shower? Oh, I'm guessing. Shower, yeah. No, ah, Joe said sparkling wine. <laughs> 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 it was a California vintage. <laughs> Touche. All right, and then... Uh, we were all drunk, and one right. said to another, and a friend of mine was there, and I mean... And, and, where, and you're 17, and you're engaged? Come on. Yeah, well, it's kind of like a, a long engagement, I would say. What, well, what month, <laughs> what month are you due to get married? Oh, we haven't really set a date yet. Oh, oh we so heard... Uh, Joe gave us a month. Well, you know, Joe doesn't really know because we haven't really decided because I'm having second thoughts about it now. And that's well, why would Joe about. give us... What was the preliminary date? The preliminary date? Well, it's bounced around from, like, March to June, and I don't know. June? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, and what, and, what's, and what is Joe to your fiancé? He's actually a really good friend <coughs> from high school to, me, to my fiancé, and <laughs> I... They've known each other for a very long time. Is he going to be in your wedding? Yeah, he's supposed to be the best man. All right. And why are you so chaotic? What's on, What's wrong with you? Well, because because I'm starting to fall for Joe. No, no, listen. Were but, you, were you, where are your parents? You live at home? Yes, I live at home. And you both your parents are together? Uh, no, I'm with, I live with my mom. Well, where's your dad? Uh, my dad, I haven't seen him in a while. Is he a drug addict? No. What ha- why'd he leave? Uh, just, they didn't work out. What happened? Just, it was a bad situation. I don't know. What? And Justin, he's just out of your life? Yeah, I don't see him that often. Why? Just because he's kind of got his own life going on now. What's the matter oh, with him? That he would, he I, hold on. I hope my kid that I ban and lets me off this easily. Yeah, just hey. He's just, just, uh, just doing his own thing. He's doing his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> what is with, why did he leave? What did you see? Um, I just, they just weren't happy. They fought a lot. What kind of, was there violence? Uh, no, not violence. He just wasn't. He wasn't around a lot. He was very distant from the family. Okay. You, your, your dad abandoned you. He's an a-hole. Yeah, I've seen that. And he screwed you up a little bit with the boys, and now you got this weird attention thing yeah, that you have he... with male. Shut up. <laughs> okay? So, here's what you need to do. What do I need to do, Adam? You need to, do, you need to not do a few things. You need to not get married. Yeah. You need to not have any kids. Okay. You understand? Yes, you need to slow I'm down. I'm committed in this relationship. It's been like four years. Look, yeah, but you're 17. You were 13 years old when you started to go out with him. It's crazy. Here's, Make it easy. Here's the thing. Your dad screwed you over. Now you got, you got, you're, you're very dangerous because you, uh, you got boobs and issues with men. True. And you can do whatever you want. And you're very desirable because you're 17 and you'll put out. And you got a nice ass. And so the world is your oyster and everyone's your dad. And every, How do you it, know if I have a nice I, ass? I know. It's nice for the time being. At 17, they're all nice. It's going south soon. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Believe you me. I don't want to be there when that dam breaks. It's going to happen. But listen. <laughs> For the time being, you can just you can live off you can live off uh, Miller Genuine Draft and Funyuns and never get out of shape. Yeah. And every, every guy wants to f you. And now there's a lot of compensating to do for abandoning dad. Right. That's going to get you in bad relationships, chaotic relationships, and you're going to have kids. And then you're going to screw the kids up. And then I'm going to have to pay for those goddamn kids. You're going to have to pay for the goddamn kids. That's right. So you need to break things off with the fiance. Realize that men aren't the answer. What? I tell my fiance how should, how Well, don't worry. You're Dipper, doing him a favor. Joe's going to tell him that he's you're seeing other people, so there that's going to take care of it. We already told him. And get on birth control. Are you on birth control? Yes, I'm on birth control. Stay God, on it. Me. Go to school, get a job, fight to keep it and find Jesus Christ. Thank you.
<laughs> Screwball girls. I'm going to kick these dads right in the nuts. Yeah. yeah, the they, son, yeah. they abandon their little girls. Sucks. and Screws then, them up for life. Yep, and it does. They, they, so the, the dad will walk out when the girl's two or three years old. The girl sort of festers for about 10 years and then wakes up at 13 or 14 with a set of cans. And all of a sudden, guys are looking at her. And now it's just game on. It's all compensation. Everyone's dad. And they're just running around. And that's it. And that's I don't sad. really blame them. I'd do the same thing if anyone was interested in me at 14 and a half. Yeah. You know I'm just surprised so many people can get engaged at 17 years old or 16 or whatever. Start a relationship at 13. I mean, well, Christ. there was no one there to tell her what you know what's right and wrong. It's like, no. well, I don't know, maybe not, whatever. And what are their choices? Yeah. Getting D's in public school or there's some 26-year-old dude who's got his own ride who's interested in them yeah. and wants to party. And all of a sudden, the attention they never got growing up, Power. now they're getting attention from everyone. Uh, super attention. They're celebrity attention. Yeah. Because yeah, they have power. They have money. They're older. Yeah. All right. Let's, Sad. Uh, we got it all worked out. This never happened in Canada, by the way. No, Canada. Yeah, that, move that never to Canada. happens. Hey, come on. We're socialists over there. It's all good. Everybody's <laughs> rich. It doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, everyone's rich. Or poor. Or <laughs> nobody's nobody rich. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. I mean, everyone's the same. <laughs> that's, that's, like... that's, uh, that's the point. They're all the same. All right. Let's uh, hear something from Simple Plan. Uh, this is called I Do Anything. Another day is going by I'm thinking about you all the time But you're out there and I'm here waiting And I wrote this letter in my head Cause so many things were left unsaid But now you're gone and I can't think straight Another good one from Simple Plan. The Ooh, audience say. loves it. Yeah, they're crowd pleasers. Catch them uh, tomorrow night, pleasing uh, mostly uh, vagrant, uh, transient crowd. Hobos. Hobos that uh, 
we will actually, I use a fire hose to corral them into the audience <laughs> pen and then, uh, <laughs> then threaten them to rock by taking away the fortified wine. <laughs> or, and or, or bang their head. Nice. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow night on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live show. All right, let's, uh, let's take one more call, and then we'll uh, head toward break. Drew, you got... Mm -hmm. What are you pointing at? Six. Oh, okay. Well, I knew that. Yeah. It's got the sticker there, buddy. Melissa? Mm -hmm. You're 14? Yeah. What's up? Um, how Dr. Drew was saying earlier, how girls like kind of give head to guys to keep them around. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. That was Drew's plan in junior high, by the way. You do that? Sort of. <laughs> you sort of do that. I did to this one guy, and he like stuck around, and that kind of got me doing it. That's well, great. It it's, works. It's it works, but they're not sticking around for you. They're sticking around for yeah, the I know. you know. That's and I know, but I like I don't get attached to them like like how girls get attached real easy. Yeah, but look, it's a it's a horrible way to try to buttress your self esteem, to try to prop yourself up and feel better about yourself, or to try to to sort of capture guys when in fact guys should be wanting to be with you and you should be able to search yourself and him be concerned about what your needs are in the relationship rather than you just being some sort of receptacle for him. That doesn't work. Well, yeah, and plus like guys that I really like, I like won't even consider doing it too. You wouldn't consider doing it too. Mm -mm. That's very mm. ironic. Maybe that was it. Maybe all the ladies really loved me yes, in high school. That's, therefore, that's, that's why I was never blown. That's the way I'm going to look oh, at so it. much better now. Yeah, that's the way I'm going to spin <laughs> they it. They all loved me. <laughs> you made the whole nation feel better, Melissa. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. girls desired me to such look, a great extent. That Melissa, you know what the ladies me. like. What, what is like it, giving me or What is it you want to ask us? You can go ahead and stop doing this. It's fine. What's your question? Mm, they, um, I don't know, just like why I... Because your self-esteem is in the toilet. Okay. All right, and if you if we um, if you can find ways to build up your your self esteem, your worth, keep good people around you, try to focus on things that help you feel better about yourself, whether it's schoolwork or hobbies, whatever. Get some close friends. Well, what if I, hobbies? God knows your family's probably not doing so hot right now. <laughs> Where's dad? Where is dad? Um, I don't know my dad, but I have a stepdad. Yeah. Is he a pain in the ass? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where's my bourbon? And that that's where the real problems. How are. Uh, how long has stepdad been around? Since I was five. All right. And real dad cut out uh, when, what age? I never met him like before I was born. See a pattern forming here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, your mom was single for five years, huh? Mm-hmm. Doesn't sound well, like One of the her. great uh, paradoxes of the human being is that girls with low self-esteem have lots of sex, and males with high self-esteem have lots of sex. And I know. That's where they get the self-esteem from the girls <laughs> with the low self-esteem. <laughs> that's Pumping what I needed. Pumping it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how guys get the <laughs> self-esteem. I know it sucks. I'm great. I get laid all the time. Yeah, <laughs> look at me, me and my champion penis. <laughs> and they oh, let's not forget forget about you, ass. Yes, you helped to move the penis. God bless you. <laughs> Without you, it wouldn't have been possible. Oh, now let's not. Who's that complaining? Is that Mr. Balls? <laughs> you guys are doing a wonderful job as not only producing the semen but acting as a counterweight. <laughs> as I bang the bejesus out of the young girls with the low self-esteem. Let's take ourselves a little break. Simple plan is here. Uh, when we come back, maybe we'll hear from uh, the nipples and the anus. Yes! The we'll be right back. Call on the 1-800-LOVE-191. This Love is <laughs> on 94.7 NRK. Eight years. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Pierre, David, and Chuck are all here from Simple Plan. Kurtwood Smith will be in here tomorrow night. He's the uh, dad and uh, character actor who, uh, good guy, good actor from uh, that 70s show. Had a good time with him last time he was in here. back pretty quick, too. Well, it's probably been coming on to a year. Yeah, maybe. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to uh, Tiana. Hi. Hey, you're 20. What's up? Um, actually, I had just a couple questions for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I have a problem, I guess, with masturbation. I tend to do it a lot. Mm. Yeah, not, not a problem, not a problem baby. Not a problem at all. Just <laughs> keep good. going. Keep that puppy in shape. Fortunately, we have a band here to help you tonight. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, 
day. <laughs> we all feel the same way. How much uh, How much are you good for a day? Um, I can get up to about six to eight hours. Nice. What? Six to eight hours? Whoa! You make a living out of it? I mean, are you like in front of a window or something? Are you in the L.A. area right now? <laughs> I... I do it six times a day, but that takes me about 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not six hours. <laughs> you, you know you can make a living out of it, right? No. <laughs> yes, there's those things called peep show. Yeah, David would pay a lot, a lot of big money for that. Okay, okay guys, settle down. Settle are, down. You, are you also with a boyfriend? Or? <laughs> yes, I am. And in, in addition to the six hours a day? Well, then, like, we'll have, you know, sex as well. For two minutes. With the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you got the best life ever. Your life is centered around sex. It's awesome. But he thinks it's a problem. Like, he, because it'll keep me up at night. Like, I'll just keep going until like five in the morning when I work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you let him watch? No, he doesn't. Like, he falls asleep. And that's well, you know, after hour five, <laughs> it's like, uh, I'd be David. asleep too. I don't blame him. <laughs> But, All right, so this this suggests sexual compulsion and maybe even sexual addiction, right? Okay. Because when you start having consequences from sexual activity, that's when it's you know you can't control it anymore. That that's when it gets to be a problem. And the the usual source of that sort of thing is some sort of sexual trauma growing up. Did you did you sexually abused? No, I I did, but. My father had, like, all his Playboys, and he used to always look at those when I was really young. Okay. Watch, well, watch that, pornos and stuff. Okay, watching pornos at how old? <laughs> I was probably, like, six or seven. All right, that tends to... That's one of the things... That having sexual material around at a young age is one of the things that can... It is kind of a sexual trauma. You know, you might have experiences and some horrible trauma, but it does tend to sort of change your wiring a little bit, and some of the people we see for sexual compulsions do have that history. Well, how many orgasms do you have in six to eight hours? Yeah, back to more important material. Yeah. <laughs> Can, it just flows. <laughs> Are you tired? Wow, lots of them. I mean, you, you, in, into the hundreds at this point uh, in, eight, in eight hours? No, not that much, but I, I'd say it, up to like over like in the 50s, 60s. Wow. <laughs> that's great. Man, that's like, that's like almost a week for me. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's every day? No, it varies depending on how you know, tense I've been or stressed out I've been. Sure. But usually mm. it's at least two to three hours. Right, but the fact that you wow. need that sex becomes a way of managing affect, a way of managing feelings and responding to anxiety, that, that's not exactly normal necessarily. But Drew, let me paint you a scenario. This happens to me sometimes. I've had a tense day. I come <laughs> home. I come back from the office. Yeah, the boss was on my back. So I want to have 35, 40 orgasms. Before, <laughs> it used to happen to me during exam week. Exam week was a big masturbation period. Yeah. <laughs> That's out of frustration. That's yeah, a little like, bit different. I'll study one page and then I'll jerk. Oh, I'll... Uh, yeah. I'll Teacher's like, yes. who spilled white out all over this term paper? <laughs> Again? All right. Uh, so what should she do? Um, anything else, Yeah, we know about any, any bipolar illness in your family? No. And any addiction? No. Alcoholism? No. Where do you work? <laughs> Triple A. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Lives up a little well, Tiana. Well, masturbating eight hours a day, fellas. Blah, blah, blah. She's burning a lot of fluids out there. We're going to need some Gatorade. Blah, 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 Businessman's lunch. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> You guys have good strip clubs in Canada. Oh, we do, yeah. man. Montreal, they're amazing. Man. Oh. You know what? Montreal. Not only are they good in Canada, but they're good in Quebec. Yeah. We have this new law. Well, not, like what, like, like two years ago? Yeah, yeah. It's ten dollars Canadian, which is about a buck American for yeah. a lap dance, and you can touch her all over you yeah. want. Yes, yeah. and then you go home and you jerk off there thirty six times. We That's heard right. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Our, yeah we don't really go there. No, but my no. mom told me she works there. Legend has it. Say One dollar American. Shoot your load. Fortified Canadian beer. Moosehead. Canada. Gretzky. All right. Guy Carboneau. Al McKinnis. All right. So, look, a little therapy maybe? Is this a problem for you? Um, It can be at times. Like, I notice it mostly when I'm bored. Like, It'll just be uh, are you sure there's no alcohol? This is kind of addict behavior. No alcoholism anywhere in your family. No, not not that I know of, at least. What's your ethnicity? I'm white, Caucasian. Where are your ancestors from? Um, Assyria. Assyria, Middle East. Middle East. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, that's some kind of record because uh, not a whole lot of those folks do uh, this much masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pull that that whole uh, frock and burka off each time. 
Glad I can set that record for my people. Yeah, there you That's go. Right. Yeah, you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> All right. If you're so, interested, uh, there's SA out there. There are therapists that specialize in sexual compulsions. These are kind of tender and difficult issues to deal with. And so it's somebody that has to be used to dealing with these things if uh, you do decide. Well, to treat also, uh, pardon the pun, but it sounds like she's got too much time on her hands. Yeah, you, you gotta find a I mean? hobby. She's got to get a little bit busy. I Try mean, reading a book. Got a job. Six, eight hours. Uh, you that's know a lot saying? of time. That's a yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the, the, uh, well, 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 she doesn't sleep. She it's doesn't. a lifestyle. Right. Yeah, that's right. The <laughs> devil makes work for idle hands, mm. as they say. Kristen? Yeah? You're 18? Mm-hmm. What's, What's going up? On? Um... I was engaged when I was 17. Oh, my. There we go again. I know, I know, I know. It's so bad. But All I'm right. to not get married. At least you know it. That's good. <clears throat> and, um, I don't know, after I broke up with him, he, like, calls me all the time, follows me around and stuff, and I guess last night he tried to kill himself. What do you mean you guess? Well, I got a phone call at 2.30 in the morning from his mom, and um, he tried to jump off a bridge. <laughs> what happened? He's okay. I guess they released him from the hospital today, but um, I don't. I don't know what to do. Like he's calling me all the time again. I filed for a restraining order today. Well, how 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 big was this bridge? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a tiny, tiny. Bridge. I don't know. It was probably really tiny because it was it a exactly was it a miniature golf bridge. course? What's with, <laughs> the, what's with the mom calling you at two in the morning? Why would she do that? Because she says that she holds me personally responsible for everything that her son does. Now. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure she did a fabulous job with this Parenting, youngster, yeah. and uh, now it's all your fault. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. All right, so uh, what are they, just sort of your basic white trash? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and she's just an idiot, and she's uh, he's a pain in the ass, and you broke up. How long ago was this? Um, about a month and a half ago. How long were you with him for? I was with him for a year and a half. Why? Okay. Why did you break up with him? Why? Because I wasn't ready to get married at, you know, barely turning 18. Was he the one that forced the marriage issue? Um, no, it was mutual, but, like, I don't know, after I turned 18 and kind of got out in the world and everything, I didn't want to get married. I wasn't ready to you, you met somebody, right? Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, you, not really. You started going, you found a guy, a you met, found a, a guy guys. you liked, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Was, now, listen, wow. Man. That's good, man. Right, listen, good. I, we, we have the world's dumbest callers. First off, damn. No eighteen-year-old who thinks it's a great idea to get married at seventeen says, "Well, there's a lot of world out there, a lot of life to live. I wanted new experience, I, I, a lot of I, bridges I, to cross." I, that's I, that's I was right. Working with a degree in plasma <laughs> physics. It, no, it no. She's, she dedicated. started boning a guy from junior college who worked in the snack shack and decided to get rid of this damn, guy. I, I know. Impressed. I know our callers. No, not that oh, much. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where was uh, she on five? five yeah. All right, Kristen. <laughs> Look, you cannot, you cannot deal with this guy. If you, if he talks about suicide, you have to call the cops and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, you can't be this guy's fallback, and you got to tell his mom. How old is he? It's not He's your 19. fault. He's nineteen. You gotta tell his mom that she can't be calling you when he attempts to jump off these baby bridges this way. <laughs> and I think you have the right to move on as well. That's a yeah. good choice. All right. So are you with the new guy now? No, we're just every now and then, you know, having sex. Yeah, oh, this guy is not available. She's, she's into the. Yeah. You're into the new guy, and ironically, he's not that into you, and that's why you're really into the new guy, right? right? Is the new guy married? Oh boy! No, no, he's not married. I work with him. He's just, he's just, just her boss. He's just your boss. boss? <laughs> no, he's not my boss. He's unavailable, and that makes him attractive, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this other guy's super Holy available God. and desperate, and that's why you're sort of not interested. Probably. All right, wow! Because he jumps those bridges for you. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, women are very easy to figure out. Those <laughs> extremely easy. <laughs> okay, so. Stay away from the old guy. Tell the mom not to call you. It's not your responsibility. But here's the deal. You can't waffle. You can't meet up with the guy. You can't return his phone calls. You have to cut bridges. That's you, right. You may want <laughs> to burn those bridges. You may want to find out who's taking care of him from the psychiatric hospital and contact them when he gets crazy on you. Because they are actually the ones responsible. But look, don't, don't be into the new guy, by the way, just because he's not into you. <laughs> okay. I know it's, I know it's hard. I, I know, I know. It's uh, it's, it's an opiate that you cannot get away from. Where's your dad? That's the question. My dad. I live with only my dad. Really? Oof. Uh oh. Yes. Now where's mom? My mom died when I was five. Ooh, Oof. that's bad. What happened? A motorcycle accident. Ugh. Before the helmet law. She was <laughs> riding by herself. Before the helmet law. 
she was before the helm along California. She yeah. was riding by herself. Sorry about that. No, she was with her boyfriend. Who was not your dad? No. So they broke up a long they time ago. They divorced when I was like before I even turned one. And you were were you living with your mom up until the point she died? Uh huh. Oh boy, Oof. that's a that's a big loss, and that's uh, that's going to take some getting over, right? Yeah. All right. And then I've been in and out of my house with my dad because we don't get along the greatest. Where do you live when you're not with him? Now it's coming together. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I live when I'm not with him? Yes. Um, friends and other family members. And what's up with your dad? He's an alcoholic. All right. Uh, okay. So this guy, this new guy. Where's my al- bourbon? Alcoholic. New guy, alcoholic. That's what we say. Yeah. For yeah. sure. God, you know what? He is? You know he is? Yeah. All right. That's why you're into him. That's guaranteed. <laughs> okay, baby. Stop being so predictable, all you broads, would you? I used to think I was a total loser because I, I was still living at home, and I feel no. very good yeah. coming on the show. Thank you. You speak two languages. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Bilingual. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> yeah? Slow down, baby. Don't get pregnant. Go to, I won't. Go to heck. <laughs> are, you, are you using some protection? Yeah, I'm on birth control. Uh, Good for you. Stay on that. Check out ACA, Adult Children of Alcoholics. Please. Really. Something something therapeutic. You're going to need it. Oh, so chaotic. I'll tell you, when uh, I I, I say it all the time, but guys are much more durable emotionally because there's just their wiring isn't quite as delicate. Women are wired like an English car from the 50s. (laughs) They They really are. They're just, they're just junk, possibly a French car. Americans are wired, I mean, not Americans, but uh, men are wired like Jeeps. You can just drive them underwater and stuff. They run, they run off kerosene or lantern oil or gas. Whatever you pump, you piss in them, they work. <laughs> That's how guys are. And you never quite get that ride, you know, when, it, when everything's working, when you're going on all cylinders. But, uh, but women, so delicate. And parents screw them up early. That's it. Dad's an alcoholic. Now they're into the alcoholic guy. So predictable. Let's stop trying to be so predictable, everybody. Doesn't it anger you that uh, Dr. Drew can figure figure out in the first 30 seconds of the call? Yes. You know what I'm saying? I would be insulted by this. Make a change. All right, let's take a break. You guys make a change, and we'll be back. Back in a minute. Love Line on 94.7 NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Line. NRK. Yeah, it's Love Line, everybody. In studio tonight, a little band by the name of Simple Plan. I'll tell you, these guys, you're right all the way from northern Florida. I'll tell you what, these kids, I heard their stuff, Drew, and I like it. I like what I hear a lot. This close to dropping trowel. Last time I heard these guys playing. They're going to be on the Kimmel show. He's pro, man. They'll be on that show tomorrow night rocking it hard in the outdoor arena there. So look forward to that, everybody. Ow! Yes, indeed. Let's uh, get back to the phones. Speak to uh, Mike, who's 17. Mike? Yo, I just want to say uh, hi to Adam and Dr. Drew. You guys kicked major butt on the I ass on the air but you just want to say that and um what about us you don't like us oh yeah I do. I'm, I'm getting you guys now <laughs> all right cool <laughs> uh, just checking okay. just checking all right go all right, yeah, uh, all right. Uh, right hold on a second you cannot talk to the people who call this show, you understand? Until they are ready for you to talk to them. It confuses them. I, I just shifted it the whole thing. Them. It's like giving <laughs> hand motions to the dolphins that they don't understand before they do the trick. That's right. That's full. I apologize. Hey, Mike, go ahead and ask. You got a question for the band? Yeah, I just want, first want to say you guys are awesome. And I just want to ask, um, how is your fame, you know, has it been on MTV and all? How has it influenced like, your love lives and, and the amount of play you guys get? I'm not a virgin anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's big. Since I'm on the road, I don't get any more. <laughs> yeah, David has a girlfriend, and uh, he won't cheat on her. It depends on the, on the people. Uh, you know, at first it didn't really matter. I, I don't really know. I get laid all the time. That's all I can say. Really? That's no. good. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like you know, it's definitely it's 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 gotten easier. But um, in the same sense, when it gets easier, sometimes you don't really want as much. I guess you know what I mean. Like, hey, don't don't ruin it for the rest of us. I'm man. sorry. I'm sorry. No, I mean. Uh, I don't know. It's changed it in uh, in many various ways for me. He's um, gay. True, <laughs> please, please. They don't even know what that means. Mike. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a question. 
Right. Yeah, tell me, how'd you guys hook up with Good Charlotte? I mean, because I know you guys were pretty We didn't hook up with them. We're not gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care what What are you trying says. to say, dude? No, actually, uh, uh, years ago. We, uh, we went, and we're, we're from Montreal, Canada, and they were coming through on a tour with a band called MXPX. I'm not sure if you're aware of uh, who they are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great, great, band. great band from... Um, Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Yeah, in that area. And uh, they came by, and they were on tour with them, they're opening up for them, and we went to see the show. It was at the Metropolis in Montreal, and we just went to see them because we were friends with MXPX, and we know them. God, you talk so fast tonight. I'm sorry. And then, uh, well... <laughs> and then we went to a strip club together. Yeah, Good Charlotte was there. They were opening, and we met them there. Montreal strip club. Yeah, and we took them out to a strip club and showed them... The you know the beautiful ladies there, the and exotic women of Montreal, yeah, and what the they would do. The currency, I exactly. Mean, <laughs> yeah, buck twenty five. That's American. how they spend their it's per, like a per dollar. Games. A dollar's worth like ten bucks. Hey, hey, Mike. Yeah. You're calling from Pebble Beach. Yeah. You remember me? No, but when's that? Uh, <laughs> when's that concourse? When's that car concourse out there? Um, that's, that's in August. In August? Yeah, because right now we got the golf tournament. So. Uh, all right, buddy. I'll see you all then. Right, see you guys. All right. Oh, I got that big car thing out Bye-bye. there. Bye bye. See here. Bye, Mike. Pebble Beach sounds nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. You ever been there? Where is that yeah. again? Yeah. It's up up north toward uh, San Carmel Francisco. Kind of, yeah. San Francisco. I don't know why I called it that. San Francisco, right? Yeah, it's real nice. You guys now it's got you a guys, famous golf course there, right? You guys yep. been up and down the coast here at all? Nah, a little bit, yeah. We, we, we <laughs> toured with Money Money Boston's. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Great did, guys. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. We did uh, <laughs> LA, San Francisco, <laughs> Portland, Seattle. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> it's San Diego as well. No, it's it's. I think it's our favorite state, California. It's really beautiful. The weather is just awesome. Yeah, wah! that's uh, that's yes. Dicky trying to prove his wah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk to uh, Ray, who's twenty one. Ray, hi. What's up? Oh, Ray, the female. Ooh. Ooh. What's up, Ooh. baby? Hello. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? What are you wearing? You have a sexy voice. What's going on, Ray? <laughs> I've, I've been smoking for too long. Um. I've been going out with my boyfriend for about a year and a half and wondering whether to tell him that years back I was raped and had an abortion. Mm. How old were you when you were raped? Twelve. <laughs> twelve? Oh, and you got pregnant at twelve? Yeah, I did. Who did this? Um, I was I was set up on a blind date by a, another 12-year-old girl. It was her uh, 14-year-old cousin. <sighs> Set up on a blind what? date at twelve, huh? And a fourteen-year-old uh, Drew's got a puss on. Like no, no weird sexual abuse before that. Um, yeah. no, my my parents are dirty hippies, and so I was trying really hard to be like all the other girls. Which was what? Uh, anything they wanted to be. Anything so they did, wanted. Were to you be exposed to weird stuff or something? Um. Yeah, like I don't know, everything that that you hear all the time. Uh, grandparents alcoholics, parents drug addicts. Okay. All mm. right. So you had a lot of trauma you were dealing with. All right. And, and now you've been with this guy for how long? A uh, year and a half. year and a half. Things are getting serious? Uh, somewhat. How old is he? He's 26. And are you guys talking about maybe getting engaged or moving in together or anything like that? Not even a little bit. <laughs> are, are you kind of freaked out about commitment? Yeah, this is my uh, first committed monogamous relationship. You getting getting antsy, getting uncomfortable? Um, not not so far. Well, here here's I, wh- here's why I put him off for months and months and months before I said yes to yes to what being yeah. in a committed monogamous relationship. Okay, yeah, so now it, you're trying to push him away. Yeah, you got to sabotage him. Yeah. I got to tell him how bad I am, how horrible I am, and they, they, he doesn't know it, how, that I'm not worthy of this relationship. It's it's not that. It's mostly that. Like, there's there's a question of whether or not I can have kids. Why? The abortion was really bad. Yeah. And what, ha- what do you mean it was really bad? What happened? Um, I, I had the abortion at five months. Yeah. Ouch. What? And there was, there was no uh, anesthetic or anything. Yeah, that has nothing to do with whether there were any complications with the abortion. You're concocting this all in your uh, own mind. Well, the... I've, this is kind of what I've been told from my more recent doctor that I guess the, there had been ble- a lot of bleeding afterwards, not hemorrhaging, but um, I've developed uh, a lot of scar tissue. Did he? So your gynecologist said you'd be at risk for not having kid, not being able to carry a child. Yeah. Um, after the rape, I was really promiscuous and. 
that's not that wasn't my question that is a whole different thing so you well, got you I got chlamydia a, I, had a, I had a i had a miscarriage at, but you, you got pregnant again right yeah and i had a miscarriage at 14 okay well he, okay okay here's what we're saying right here's what's going on uh now, this whole being truthful and laying the cards on the table for your significant other sounds great, but usually the motivation is not great. Yeah. And you're somebody, because of your past and because of the trauma and your screwed up hippie parents, are having, having difficulty with commitment, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's uncomfortable for you. And you found a guy, and, and it's starting to get uncomfortable. And you're thinking about pushing him away, so you've decided to tell him something that may push him away. Right, exactly. and and then you've put it in a package that says, "Well, it's the truth. He deserves to know. Uh, I may not be able to have a child. He deserves to know that." This is all nonsense. I mean, you're you're looking you're looking to sabotage sabotage this relationship with this so-called truth. And it's because you feel like one of the things you feel, aside from difficulty being intimate, that that being an uncomfortable place for you to be in, you also feel not worth it. And you're going to show him how, how bad and not worth you are. You can't even be a mother, which right. is also a load of crap. Because all you know is that you were promiscuous. Like every young female who it was promiscuous, you may have an added risk of, of scarring in the tubes, which is something highly treatable. And can, there are many different ways that can be overcome. And focus on that. All don't right, don't so, worry about how, how flawed you are. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to break up with the guy, you're, you can break up with him, but... Don't do not do it as if you don't want to break up with him, and yet you're going to attempt to break up with him through these sort of covert means, all right? And, and secondly, why don't you just get some therapy and sort of leave him out of this for now? Because this isn't really between the two of you in a certain sense. You know what we're saying, right? Yeah. All right, how about a little therapy for all you've been through? Um, I tried that a few years ago, and both of the people that I talked to seemed like they needed therapy much more than I did. Well, hey, well, you got another good... Yeah, yeah. If it's your full answers, right? You, you need a lot of therapy for yeah. what you've been through. Or, or you just go through life the way you are, but that's not a great way to go through, right? Uh, All right. Listen, go to get therapy. Would you please stop making excuses? Yeah. Okay, do that. Don't tell your boyfriend about this until you've discussed this at length with the therapist. And if you need to, go clarify with your gynecologist what is actually going on with you because you're, you're concocting, you're, you're spinning yarns about right. it. Okay, I bet she tells uh, the boyfriend this uh, yes, this weekend. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, everybody. Get some goddamn therapy, all you people. I feel. Look, here's the deal. I feel badly for what happened to you in the past, but now that you're an adult, and you're emancipated and you're out on your own, it's up to you to take care of yourself. And don't anyone try to sell that crap of, I went to a therapist, I went to rent a friend a couple of, couple of years ago and it didn't work out, so screw him. Or I knew more than he did, or I knew more than she did, or they needed more therapy than I did. That's BS. You just need anybody to sit there. Put that's a, that's put, true. Put just a scare, listen. Put a scarecrow. Scare yeah. Put a scarecrow in there. Just go sit down. Yeah. Just right. get into the therapeutic environment yeah. and start talking and stop acting everything out constantly. Yeah, you're that's right. what it is. Here's yeah. what here's what we do in this country. You guys are so busy playing hockey <laughs> and curling <laughs> that you don't know how to live life. Let me explain how the Americans live. Our parents abuse us. They knock us around a little, and then we just go through our whole life repeating that, repeating that trauma with every, anyone we get in an intimate relationship with, and always externalizing everything. Everything, Come right, here, Drew? Give me a hug. All right. <laughs> now, now that you know the secret yeah, to the, American, the American way, that's it's right. The American way. We'll be back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking to. 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Love Line on 94.7 NRK is brought to you by Car Toys. Uh,
right, everybody. Simple plan. No pads, no helmets, just balls. That's the name of the CD. And uh, again, catch the boys uh, tomorrow night on uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us, us, man. This it was, was uh, great. This was great. It was enlightening. Nice, Fascinating. Nice meeting you guys. And uh, come back anytime you like. We'd love Thank to. Thank you. And until next time, this is Adam Kroller for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You got to start drinking. <laughs> oh, I do enough of that. <laughs> All right. No, drinking semen. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.